On this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called calculating equilibrium composition from an equilibrium constant. And this one's going to have a lot of algebra in it, so buckle up and get ready. Uh, in this problem, you will be given a balanced chemical equation, and then you'll be given some information about some of the molecules in the, in the reaction, but not all of them. You'll be given the equilibrium constant, and you'll be asked to calculate the e equilibrium concentration might be a pressure of one of the substances in the system. So to solve this problem, we're just gonna jump right in. You absolutely cannot do this problem without an ice table. There's no shortcuts here. So we're gonna have to start by setting up an ice table. And to do that, I'm just copying the chemical reaction and then I'm creating the ice table rows. The In the first row, the I row, that stands for initial. And this is gonna be the initial molarity of the substances in the system. That information is gonna be coming from the information given to us in the problem. Be a little bit careful because because these numbers need to be in units of molarity and it's giving us the moles and the liters so we're gonna have to do that molarity calculation ourselves. for H2 the molarity is going to be 0.8 moles so this uh, I'm gonna do the math down here this molarity is going to be the number of moles 0.8 divided by the volume in liters which is 0.5 so that is 1.6 molar, that's our H2. And then we also have some HI, that molarity is gonna be 1.3 moles divided by 0.5 liters. And that is 1.3 divided by 0.5 is 2.6. Uh, I don't know why I put the M here in this ta data table, we don't need it. We have no initial I2 at all. So now we need to fill in our change row. This is where we use that symbol X to indicate how much each one of these substances are changing. For me personally, I always like to use negative signs on the reactant side and positive signs on the product side. We use um, the stoichiometric coefficient for each one of these substances. And then we follow that up with an X. So our change in this in this reaction is minus x, minus x, and plus x. And then down here in our equilibrium spot, we just do the math right up above it. So 1.6 minus 1x. So at equilibrium, we're gonna have 1.6 minus x of our H2. We're gonna have negative x of our I2, and we're going to have 2.6 plus 2x of the HI. Now, of course, negative x doesn't make sense. Um, we can't have a negative concentration of anything, but it's okay to have this term here in the ice table. When we do the math on this, our value of x is gonna come out to be a negative number. So like maybe we'll find that x is negative five. And then when we plug it in here, it'll be negative x, which will be negative negative five, and it's all gonna work out good, whatever it might be. All right, so our goal is to calculate the equilibrium molarity of I2. So that means that we need to know what this number is right here. We have to solve for x. In order to solve for x, we need to set up an equilibrium expression. That's going to be our products, Hi over our reactants, H2 and I2, each one raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. So our equilibrium expression looks like this. We're going to plug in everything that we know um, in this equilibrium expression. We know the value of the equilibrium constant, and we know terms for all of the substances in the equilibrium expression. So that means we're going to say um, the equilibrium constant is 6.16. Again, I'm getting that from the problem. The expression that we came up with for HI is 2.6 plus 2x, and that needs to be squared because of the coefficient in the uh, coefficient in the balanced equation and the exponent in the equilibrium expression. And then our reactants, 1.6 minus x for H2 and negative x for I2. Now here's where the problem's gonna get a little bit uh, a little bit tricky. We need to solve for x. So this is where we're gonna get heavy on the algebra. We need to solve for x, so we need to rearrange this equation so that we can get ready to solve it for x. Now what I like to do when I'm working on these problems is start by getting rid of the fraction. So I'm going to take that denominator and I'm going to multiply the denominator by the left hand side of the equation. Everybody's got their own way of doing algebra, this is just my way. And I'm also going to write out the 2.6 plus 2x squared as two separate terms. 
because it makes it easier for me to visualize the, the math that I need to do to expand that. We're going to expand both sides of this equation, the left side and the right side. And I'm probably just gonna do this expansion in parts. So I'm probably just gonna do um, this piece first for the left side. 6.16 times 1 1.6 is 9.856. So that's this piece. And then now I'm gonna do this piece right here, minus 6.16x. And that's enough for now for the left side. And then over here on the right side, I'm going to do the FOIL method to get this part expanded. So 2.6 times 2.6 is 6.76 plus 2 times 2.6, 5.2x, 5.2x, 4x squared. Now I'm going to expand the left side of the rest of the way and do um, some combining of like terms on the right hand side. So that's going to give me negative, on the left side, negative 9.856x plus 6.16x squared. Definitely made a poor choice of trying to put that over there because it's definitely not gonna fit. Uh, and that's my left side. That is equal to 6.76 plus 10.4x plus 4x squared. So now I'm going to combine like terms that are on the left side and the right side. I'm trying to turn this into a polynomial. So I'm going to move everything over to the left hand side negative 9.856x plus 6.16x squared minus 6.76 minus 10.4x minus 4x squared. That is going to be equal to zero. Now I am going to combine like terms again, all the stuff that's on the left hand side now. And I'm going to set it up so that it looks like a polynomial. Um, first, I'm going to do the x squared terms, so that's going to give me 2.16x squared. And now I'm going to do my x terms. I've got these two guys right here, 9.856 and 10.4. Each of them are negative, so that's negative. Negative 20.256x. Let's see what, I'm gonna cross off what we've already done. We did the x squareds, we did the x's, and so now we just have that negative 6.76 equals zero. Now from here, you could use the quadratic, you could plug these um, numbers in and solve, or if your calculator has a polynomial solver, you could do that, or if you, you can just go to a website and Google polynomial solver, there's gonna be one that pops up. I'm using my calculator to do this. The first term is 2.16, the second term is negative 20.256, and the last term is negative 6.76. And as you know from algebra, you're going to get two solutions to this problem. Um, you're going to get whatever this number is right here. That's how many solutions you're going to get. So you're going to get at least two. In this, this one, because it's a second order polynomial, we're going to get two solutions. One of the solutions is 9.700. The other possible solution is negative 0.323. Always with these problems, no matter how many solutions you get for x, only one of them is going to be logical. All the rest of them are going to be crazy. And to figure out which one is logical, you're going to look back up to your ice table and you're just going to start plugging in these x values into these terms in the e row, just figuring out which one makes sense, which one doesn't make sense. Uh, if we if we start with this, because this one would be the absolute easiest one for us to plug into, if we plug 9.70 into this term right here, that would give us um, the I2 concentration is negative x. So in this case, it would be negative 9.700. And it's impossible to have a negative molarity. You cannot do that. So that means that this term this possible solution is absolutely incorrect. This is the correct solution 
and this is the one that we want to plug in. We can plug this x value into any one of these terms to get the concentration of anything at equilibrium. This problem is specifically asking us about I2, so that means we want to solve only for I2. I2 is negative x, and our x value is negative 0.323 to two significant figures, that gives us an answer of 0.32 molar.